Hi, this is Dr. Toby, host of Health and Wellness with Dr. Toby, inviting you to watch our show for this month. It's going to be a great show with Dr. Kimberly and Chad Bibb. Kimberly is a family physician at the University of Mississippi. Chad is a physical therapist in the Jackson area. They both went to school at the University of Mississippi. Kim is an assistant professor, and Chad has his doctorate in physical therapy. And we want to hear their fake journey, their life journey. They've been married 16 years. They have two beautiful daughters, and they are ministers in their church. They help do marriage seminars and health awareness seminars. You don't want to miss it. Kimberly Bibb works with me at the University of Mississippi Medical Center, and she's been an inspiration of a Christian woman, and she's going to share with you what she's learned over the years in courtship, in marriage, in raising two daughters. Chad is a young man, 43 years old, who's going to share his heart on how we can raise a new generation of African-American people who can go into the academic world, the spiritual world, and inspire people to change. This is a great show. They're going to share their faith, their focus, their family, their ups and downs, their turmoils. You will be blessed. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the show. Don't forget, Jesus is Lord. God bless you. Hi, this is Dr. Toby Mama, your host on Health and Wellness with Dr. Toby. What an honor to have you on our show. Don't touch that dial. We've been sharing for the last three weeks with Dr. and Dr. Mrs. Chad and Kimberly Bibb. Mm -hmm. I work with Kimberly at the University of Mississippi Family Medicine Department, and uh, Chad is a physical therapist in Jackson. And they've been an awesome inspiration to those of us there in Jackson. And they've been pivotal in, in shaping communities. They've spoken at churches, at couple retreats. They've inspired their church to start a health and wellness department and um, they've been such a good example of a good christian couple they have two lovely daughters and we wanted to bring them on the show to share their heart on what faith family and focus on the future looks like so today we're going to talk about them as a couple faith and their focus on the future and what they plan to do in the next couple of years so again welcome Kim and Chad to the yes, mar to the you. to the stage thank again. What an us. honor to have you mm -hmm. all the way in West Monroe, Louisiana. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying your time here with us. Yes, it's yes. um home of the ducks and the quacks. You know people who you know shoot ducks and all that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Duck yeah. dynasty. That that. Uh -huh. But let's talk about your work with God. Tell me, have you ever had a conflict of interest when you couldn't do what you were? your profession because of your faith? I mean, there was, did you ever have a challenge in your work environment that you thought conflicted with your faith? That you felt if I did this, I would have a hard time standing before God and defending why, why I did what I did. In my personal work, I've had, um, in New York, I worked mm -hmm. in a place where they were doing abortions mm -hmm. And the attending was like, you know, he was the attending over us in family medicine. And they used to do abortions in the clinic, you know. Mm. And I was a resident there, but mm. I, I, I told the chair and the program director that I don't want to be part of that. Mm -hmm. And they excluded me from that. Mm -hmm. But if, I, if he had insisted, I would have had to, you know, that would have been a conflict for me personally. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you had to... Well, as a, as a physical therapist... Um, not many times you approach subjects that are, you know, that sensitive, but um, from an ethics standpoint, right. um, one of my first jobs, I was with a company that, that I felt like was doing things mm. not quite right. I want to be careful how I work this. Right, right, right. Um, and so I can remember thinking every time something happened, um, little things like mm -hmm. changing my charges. Um, well, did you do this? Uh, I kind of, well, let's add that on. I just kind of felt like they were kind of pushing the envelope. Right. Um, I never really got to a place where I really said anything because we were about to change jobs. But the interesting thing about it, that company, which was based out of Alabama, and I'll just say it was Health South. Mm -hmm. um, just crumbled. Ended up having an issue. Yeah, yeah, they right. crumbled. And it was from the, it was, it was just in my little area 
the way things were running, mm-hmm. but it was almost like a toxic culture because there were stuff that was coming up that oh, was wow. way up top that was way worse than the stuff that I'm talking about. So mm-hmm. I can remember when I finally got to the Baptist, um, and for the, that's Baptist in Jackson, Mississippi, and I did something, and I was like, I can't remember what I was talking about. I said, like, oh, maybe I should have I should have did it this way. And they were like, no, you do what you want to do. do. Right. Yeah, if you feel like you spent this amount of money with the patient mm-hmm. and you only want to do this with the patient, that's mm-hmm. what you put. And I can remember breathing a sigh of relief. Wow. Like, man, this is such a different company. So, There's a question I wanted to ask about physical therapy. Mm-hmm. You guys tend to get real close with your clients. Oh, yeah, 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 I mean, you yeah, touch yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, How yeah. do you handle the females? Yeah. Because as a male, mm-hmm. as a physical therapist, you know, they could take it the wrong way. Mm-hmm. So just curious. I, well, I mean, you must have a professional distance. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's how you carry yourself. And there's, there have been situations where you're working with the area and I politely tell the person they're going to see somebody else. Um, but it's also your demeanor. I'm not saying I'm, I'm I don't want to say I've never got, well, I've never gotten in trouble. And I don't want to speak too soon. But I've, I've had coworkers and former classmates that have gotten in trouble. And I think it was probably totally innocent, but it was the way they, and so when I'm in a situation, I make sure it stays like that. Because you're right, you get really close to somebody when you see them three times a week. Right. Or if you're working, if it's their hip and you're having to work right here, you mm-hmm. get really close to the person. But I think keeping everything professional, I've never had a situation. Like never use had, gloves. Yeah, use gloves, keep everything, you know, keep everything professional. And if there's ever a question, <laughs> I've always just, um, do you have a physical friend. therapy assistant? Do yes. you? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's always a third person in the room. No, 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 no. Oh, no, okay. No, 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 no. Physical therapist assistant in the PT world, you don't work together like that. So okay. No, no. And typically, whenever I did something, it was always in the open. If it had to be behind closed doors with a female, I didn't do it. Okay. Yeah, we have enough. So in that situation, we have female physical therapist assistants. Mm-hmm. So in the PT world, real quickly. A PT can evaluate and see every fourth or fifth visit, but those intermit- the visits in between, a PTA can see them, okay. and they're supposed to be communicating with the PT. So typically, I'd evaluate, and if it's something that's even the slightest bit could be construed as um, sensitive, we have female therapists that I just okay. kind of slide over. So that's what I mean by I always try to stay away from that. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I've known friends who got in trouble who I feel certain didn't do anything wrong, it just kind of was taken the wrong way kind of thing. So um, as far as a physical therapist, it does get physical, but um, it, if you do things the right way and stay professional, I think you'll be okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Any conflicts you've ever had as a physician? Um, Not that I can recall right off. I can recall, um, I guess just being working in a particular clinic that I was asked to kind of serve in temporarily um that i just didn't really feel comfortable being there as far as kind of the way they asked me to go and work while this other physician um was on a particular leave and then um later on found out that there had been some charges brought brought against this particular physician and i think it was just that intuition that god Mm -hmm. gave me just to know that that was something that was just not right and I was asked to take on that particular area on a more permanent basis, but I, I uh, declined that. And I think it was just God showing me that that was not where I needed to be. And I've had a few other instances where I've been offered, you know, a job in different places and something just didn't feel quite right about it. And then later on found out again that this particular person, you know, ended up doing some things that were not quite right. So I think, you know, just, God showing me and leading me in the right direction, Mm -hmm. you know, has helped me in those particular situations. Um, And then just kind of in terms of speaking, you know, in terms of working with patients one on one, you know, and and I guess this is to speak to the audience. It's just when you're in situations like that, especially seeing patients, is it's best to always, um, you know, once, as Chad mentioned, being professional, but also having a chaperone there right. that can um, chaperone you with you, with, yeah. with patients in, in situations yeah. with like doctors that, so. I mean we always have a chaperone if it's something mm-hmm. tell us about the marriage because we live in a, con- a country with 70 percent divorce rate 16 years is golden in today's America <laughs> I know to you it doesn't sound like a lot mm-hmm. your parents are probably married for 40 
Fifth, forty-five, maybe thirty. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think my parents are close to fifty. Yeah. yeah. Forty-four. But mm -hmm. we live in a generation where sixteen is a good number of years. Yeah. So you're talking to young men and women who are like, I hope I can make a year or two. <laughs> so how? What do you want to tell those people that? It's interesting you in say that. In terms of your secret. It's interesting you say that because you know I tell people I've been married. You know I I'll tell them it'll be seventeen years this December. They're just like, oh my goodness, that's so long. And but um. You know, I mentioned earlier in the last episode, we were talking about how we were friends. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably been the overriding theme. Um, we have very similar personalities, very similar family backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So m everything kind of mixing together has always kind of um, gone, gone well. Now, have we had disagreements and arguments and things along the way? Well, sure we have. And I would tell any, especially a young couple that, that's trying to stick it out. There are so many different um, avenues I would take before I started. To, you know, divorce is so easy now. It's, you wow. know, when my parents were younger, that was just like you never. You know, that was like the final thing. But mm -hmm. nowadays, it's kind of like I've. You know, I've talked to patients that say, "Yeah, well, my first marriage, I'm gonna do this, and then when I have my second marriage, it's like they're already planning ahead." But there are so many. Whether it's an older couple at your church, whether it's a um, marriage ministry. Maybe maybe it's your pastor. Maybe it's a a couple that are both pastors. There are so many valuable people out there mm -hmm. that will really help you. My wife and I, I don't know if she remembers, we first got married. There was a couple at that church we joined. Mm -hmm. They were just amazing to us. They were wow. so nice, and they both were teachers. Um, in their Sunday school class, you couldn't wait to get there, and they just had this friend relationship going on. Wow. And of course, we didn't we weren't having any problems at the time, but a couple like that. That would be somebody I would reach out to reach and be out. like, "Look, mm -hmm. we're not gonna make it, mm -hmm. and what are you, you know, what are y'all doing?" Yeah. So, yeah, I would, I implore you because, you know, we talked about, a couple of episodes. We talked about about the single parent rate, the divorce rate. These mm -hmm. are things that are just heading in the wrong direction, especially in the African American community. And if you can, if you can stick it out now. I used to I used to say stick it out no matter what, but now that I have daughters, <laughs> I'll tell you that there are situations you don't want to be in. You know what I mean? And I'm I'm speaking from a physical standpoint. Right, right, when things right. get physical, then it's time to go. Mm -hmm. But if it's just disagreements over money and who's in charge and, and you know, there's not a physical aspect to it, please talk it out. yeah, talk right. it out. Right. Find a couple that's that you, that can mentor you, find your pastor mm -hmm. and those little um those people could help you a long right. way, long way. Because the lawyers these days, they don't care. No. It's almost like, okay, just give me the money and we'll get it for yeah, we'll get this, you. Yeah, we'll right, get this done. Right. They, don't, they don't really counsel mm -hmm. or stop it. They just want to get the money. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like anybody can get a divorce if you have a good enough reason. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Like right. I say, it's like I'm on my second marriage. I'm going to do mm -hmm. this one a little bit better instead of, you know, instead of fixing you. Wow. And being that that person with the in your first marriage. Mm -hmm. Wow! Mm -hmm. Anything you learned on the journey, marriage? Well, one of the I guess another thing is just keeping open communication, mm -hmm. um, effective communication between each other. And you know, again, as Chad mentioned, whenever we have disagreements, just not you know sliding that under the rug and just you know letting it fester, but just discussing what's going mm -hmm. on and, and sharing our feelings with each other and, and just trying to talk out our problems and not holding grudges for right. extended right. periods of time. So, um, and then again, of course, keeping God first, praying mm -hmm. together, um, you know, going to church. We, you know, like he mentioned, even though we haven't had any major problems, we do um, do our couples ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, we attend those events. Um, we've done uh, some marriage uh, retreats in the past wow. and so those things to try to keep you know the things going mm -hmm. and knowing what we need to do to to uh, maintain our marriage is, wow. is what's important too right, so. um, I and guess the, and the kids are watching so right, yeah. right. Yeah. they learn yeah. from what they see yeah, yeah. you know so yeah. if they think it's not worth it then they themselves will just lose hope in it yeah yeah, yeah. they yeah. definitely will I know my daughter now and not necessarily just looking at marriage but um, if we say something that she feels is, you know, out of line or something against what we've told her, she'll say, well, you know, so-and-so said it. And so then we have to, you know, tell her, you know, teach her in terms of that. Mm -hmm. But it just goes to show that they are watching right. every single move that you make. And we should be examples, you know, for mm -hmm. them, um, even in our marriages. Right. Mm -hmm. Any 
any pivotal scriptures you guys have used over the years as foundations for your life and ministry and marriage and you know, raising your children? Mm -hmm. any, from, any favorite scriptures, if I may put it that way? Yeah, I guess I have um, a few, but one of the main ones that I can just remember my grandmother um, sharing with me um, at a young age, and I've you know, kept this even throughout schooling and my professional career, and that's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Um, you know, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not into thy own understanding, um, but in all thy ways acknowledge oh, him, um, and he will direct our paths. And, you know, even for our family, when we say um, prayer at Chad's house, that's one verse that we will oh, recite awesome. um, at the wow. end. And so it just goes to show that I was being taught that particular verse mm -hmm. coming up and he was as well. Mm -hmm. And so that's one that I um, stick with. Stay and right, right. we do try to get our, our children to, you know, memorize scriptures as well. Mm -hmm. um, but that one and then for me would be Philippians 4.13. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I can I do can all, all things, things through Christ. Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those would be two of my favorite ones. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, you know, I, I spoke of my disappointments and when I was going through one of the tougher times, um, not getting to PT school and that year off and having classmates was my mom bought me a, a little placard mm -hmm. of Jeremiah 29 11. Mm -hmm. And that's probably been my, the first part of my life been an overriding theme in my life where I know the plans I have for you and plans to prosper. And so when I when I was at that time in my life we spoke about earlier, that's what I focused on. You know, mm -hmm. that he you know, he has plans for us and he wants us to prosper. So no matter what I end up doing, even if I didn't get into PT school, I was gonna prosper at whatever I did. That was probably my first main Bible verse. And then the one in the latter part of life, um, was that same book we talked about a couple episodes ago, Be Anxious for Nothing. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's Philippians four ten. Mm -hmm. Um that has carried me when things get tough. Mm -hmm. I, I had a problem with when the pressure, even the most recent, we talked about me changing jobs, going mm -hmm. from outpatient to home health and thinking I made a mistake. Well, Kim bought me that book, Anxious for Nothing, and it just breaks down that entire verse, uh, wow. how you celebrate, mm -hmm. celebrate, and don't be anxious and, and love God. Sounds and, like you like to read. Oh, well, no. <laughs> I like to listen to books. Um, and so, yeah, when, when, when things are tough, yes, I get my hands on something to read. To read, and right. And kind of get my mind that's back good. on it. Um, I even have a couple of your books. That yeah, you that's what I'm like. You guys like to read. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I have a couple of your books that I've read <laughs> over. Um, and so, especially when things are getting tough, mm -hmm. um, Read, listening to different Tony Evans, John MacArthur, different, mm -hmm. listening to different people kind of grasp you back in. But back to what you, your question was, those two Bible verses, um, Philippians 4.10 and Jeremiah 29.11 are probably my two mm -hmm. favorite verses. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So if you're speaking to a 13-year-old girl whose parents have just separated mm -hmm. and she feels the world is about to come to an end, she's just going to get run off with this boy and have a baby and move into some you know home where she can raise her child i mean she's just thinking in the wrong direction i want you to speak to this this girl or this boy because we have those people today in america and some of them are watching the tv show today i mean to, today we have people who purposely get pregnant just to get a check become independent and live outside the conf control of their parents. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them do this because they want to either hurt the maybe their family or their parents or they just want to move out and that's the only way they can get some level of independence. So I just want you to sh share your heart with this 13-year-old girl. Explain to her what you think her future holds and why what she's thinking of doing may not be the best put best answer to I, what the problem she's going through. I mean, it's a, it's amazing what you're saying and, and awfully humbling because, you know, before I, you know, speak about my my children, um, they're blessed and I, I hope they see through us how, you know, the love of Christ between our love. But, um, and it's not just something you see on TV. Um, I've had a, a good friend over the last couple of years go through a pretty, I use the term nasty divorce. And afterwards, the daughter was always getting in trouble at school and of course you like what you know what is she, why is she acting out and literally it was because both parents would come together when she got in trouble 
to kind of scold her. So the only time they were together was to get on to her. So if she wanted her parents together, she would get in trouble. Mm -hmm. And so to that young lady, it is not about you. Um, when your parents are having trouble and they've decided to split, it's not about you. They both still love you. You do not have to act out. You do not have to, to do something contrary to what they've taught you to either get back at them or to bring them together. They, they still love you. They both love you. They've just kind of moved separate from each other. So hurting yourself to try to get back at them is not, not something you want to do. And, on and the second thing is um, acting out to get them to, to, to kind of come together to, mm. to meet up with you is not something you should do. Um, life is still joyous out there. We probably, we've mentioned a couple of times about divorce and how it's not the way. But for many young people in our society, it is the way, and it's something that they have to deal with. But it does not have to be anything changed. Mm -hmm. Your family still loves you. Your mom and dad still loves you. Um, that young man that's whispering in your ear that he loves you more than they do, trust me, he does not. <laughs> um, just stick with it. Stick with it. And it might be tough because it just happened, but I've seen many of friends where things kind of even out. And even as Dr. Toba mentioned, you know, this example, I'm not sure your parents would tell you this, does not mean that would be the example for you. Mm -hmm. Go on to have a nice long marriage um, that God wants you to have. So mm -hmm. hang in there if something is troubling you right now, and um, God loves you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Kim, I want you to talk to the mm -hmm. young 21-year-old mm -hmm. sweethearts in college mm -hmm. uh, who are courting, and they mm -hmm. want to spend the rest of their lives together. And I want you to tell them from your experience what they should do in their courting stages? How should they have a successful courtship? Because 50% of courtships don't succeed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the number one reason, and I hate to bring this up, but it's TV, is because they have premarital sex. And mm -hmm. a lot of times people, oh, that's old school. Mm -hmm. But we, we, it's still in the Bible, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. honor, that um, marriage is honorable if the bed is under foul. So I still tell, couple, mm -hmm. tell people courting, mm -hmm. if you really feel that hung up about getting in bed, get married. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. You don't right. need a big wedding. Just right. walk to the, to the justice of the peace and mm -hmm. sign the book. Mm -hmm. But please honor the marriage bed because mm -hmm. it will help you in the future. So 21-year-old mm -hmm. college, and they just can't seem to keep their hands off each other, and they're like, oh, God, how do we make this a successful courtship? What's mm -hmm. the, how do we make this work? Is mm -hmm. there anything we can do to make sure we don't get off track and then somewhere along the line we don't get married at the end, you mm -hmm. know? Right. So that's what I used to talk to them about. Yeah, well, I'll say, because um, I guess, you know, of course, Chad and I were dating, you know, in college, and it was, you know, it is difficult when you're going through and you know you may think that everybody is doing certain things but number one is just trying to keep your priorities in order and knowing what your end goal is and trying to stay focused on that and knowing that certain things that you do now could affect what you want to do in the end mm -hmm. and so just trying to stay focused trying to you know one again you know trying to i think once we stay focused on god initially mm -hmm. reading our bibles going to church and and having that as the primary focus and then trying to keep our studies in line and trying to study and knowing that we want to you know eventually you know graduate and get a good job and have a good career and knowing that you know having a family um and raising a family that's very important and all of that will come in due time but just trying to keep your priorities in order and keeping god first and trying to you know follow his commandments um mm -hmm. i think those are the main things successful right, right and you don't have a specific timeline for them mm -hmm. you don't tell them one year some people say don't do more than one as year as, of course oh, of course oh. have you heard those some people say don't do my own that because it's always really, you know, all that stuff. But. No, no, there's no time. <laughs> there's no time. Everybody, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody's different. So, well, I would say, like, not rushing into okay, anything. Okay. So that's the main thing is not going too fast um, and, you know, trying to rush things. But Or maybe um, what they mean is from engagement to marriage should be one no, year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> right. So how many, from engagement to marriage, how was yours? It was actually a year. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think a lot of people say engagement to marriage should uh -huh. be under a year. Yeah. yeah. 
Right. Yeah, because yeah, cause we did get engaged December and then got married the next wow. December. She remembers yeah. all the. Yeah, yeah. I was like, how long was it? I want you to tell me what lessons you learned from your parents, and then we'll talk what lessons you learned from your parents. Because I believe a lot of times we don't benefit from hindsight. Mm -hmm. So we repeat the mistakes of the past because we don't know. We don't learn from what they did. So mm -hmm. what did you learn from your parents yeah, and, that and made you a successful actually professional? Actually, still, still learning today. But um, one, you know, I'll say with my mom, and, and when she retired, I um, told her she was the epitome of a Proverbs 31 woman. Um, but just taking care of us at home and then having a full-time job and just being an example, you know, mm -hmm. for us, um, carrying herself in a ladylike manner, always being, you know, respectful and um, just, again, taking care of the family and making sure that we, um, you know, went to church and um, prayed over us. And then again, my, my father, you know, working hard, but just the strong work ethic that they have, um, always um, providing support for me and my sister and even now for my, for my kids. Mm -hmm. um, those are some of the, the main lessons that I learned and just, you know, sticking to, you know, what you do and trying to work hard for it, setting goals and mm -hmm. trying to be successful um, in life. Those wow. are, are some of the main things. Um, they weren't politically like um, they didn't run for office or nothing. No. Like, OK, because they sound like they should have been politicians, they yeah. like, <laughs> like the perfect it, couple or uh -huh. something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, How about your parents? What did you learn from um, your parents? My dad, it's just he's just a common sense kind of guy. Um, just this is how it is. I, you know, you know, don't buy me a bunch of Christmas presents. I'm not going to use them. You know, he's just kind of down to earth. Um, he served. He served at the church since I was a little boy. Um, I can remember when Kim's grandmother was starting to become ill. They would always say, "Well, your daddy came up here." I was like, "He didn't even. How do you know where you were?" But I realized wow. he he visits people in the hospital all the time. That's the kind of person he is. And then my mom is a, she is a go-getter. I mean, she is a doer. She gets things done. Um, she's pretty, um, I'm trying to think of the best word for it, but she, I mean, if you want something done, she's the one to do it, whether it's a program at church, wow. whether we want to decorate your house, whether you're thinking about doing this, she is the type to get it done. And it, it traces all the way back to that little girl who was poor and make sure she get got a new job and make sure she did better and did better and better and better. So my mom is just like that same plaque she bought me, um, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. I mean she that's just how she lives wow. and she treats her and she wants the same thing for her grandkids. She pushes yeah. them and she wants the best for everybody. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I think a lot of us in the African American community will learn more by looking at the past. I know the future is great, but mm -hmm. if you build on the foundations of the, f of the past, you can actually build a greater future. Mm -hmm. And I want to encourage you, Dr. Bibb and her husband, Dr. Kim Bibb and Dr. Chad Bibb mm -hmm. have been inspiring. And I think the reason I brought them on the show was to shape the focus of the, focus of the next generation. They've had setbacks, they've had upsets, mm -hmm. but they got up, dusted themselves up, and today they're where they are because they did not quit. Mm -hmm. You cannot fail if you do not quit, but you will fail every time if you quit. Mm -hmm. So get up, dust yourself up. This journey is not over. Jesus is Lord. Look forward to seeing you next time. God bless you. Mm -hmm.